Okay, what's up, man? This is a big welcome home to the homie Guy Fisher. This is my tribute, my welcome home to him. You know, I'm going to give you my version of what went on. You know what I mean? With certain things, how, you know, me and his encounter. You know what I mean? I don't know the homie from the street because I was a little bro doing what I do. You know what I mean? Which wasn't much compared to what he was doing back then. But you know what I mean? If for those of y'all that don't know, Guy Fisher, Guy Fisher down with the uh, council with Nikki Barnes was one of them that sat at the table at a young age. You know what I mean? Official OG stood to 10 toes down. You know what I mean? He financed the purchasing of the Apollo back in 77. The bro got locked up from 84. So he was already locked up 11 years when I got in. Now that's where I'm going to pick up with my story. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people doing welcome homes and don't even know the, the big bro. You know what I mean? But it's all good because they walking them home. But my welcome home is uh, like this. Because I know the big homie going to see this. So I know he going to laugh. But I'm going to give it 100. Yo, 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 guy, ain't nothing changed. I give it 100. You know what I mean? Now, when I ran into the big homie, is I wind up in, uh, you know, I started my bit off in Lewisburg. You know what I mean? Uh, none of this is the brag. Just giving you a little history how I ran into guy. Started the bit off in Lewisburg. Tore the joint up. You know what I mean? Started a riot there, what they call the crack law riot because they voted on the crack law one to one. It didn't go the way, uh, it didn't go to make the crack equal with powder that would give blacks the same amount of time as the whites. You understand what I'm saying? So of course, you know, I'm just coming in the system 10 months. I wasn't having it. You know what I mean? I tore Lewisburg up, you know what I mean? Me and a bunch of the homies. Big shout out to the homies that fought for the crack law. Not bragging about it, but let you know somebody had to sacrifice for that crack law. All of that that we did in 1995 when we fought for that crack law, during that Million Man March time is when all that went down. When we fought for that crack law, that was to make a stand that Liggins wasn't going for it. Liggins wasn't going for it. I came in angry. I came in aggressive. I came in a warrior. You understand what I'm saying? And I wasn't going for it. You know what I mean? So when they turned the joint down, it wasn't going to help me anyway because I had 255 keys of crack. But bottom line is, it was going to help a lot of the brothers. You understand what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so, of course, you know, I went and did what I do when, you know, a bunch of other brothers supported it because they saw what time it was. And, you know, I explained to them it was for a cause. You know what I mean? Somebody have to sacrifice to make a change. You understand what I'm saying? Someone has to sacrifice to make a change. You know what I mean? And I chose to be that one because that's how I was raised. And a few other brothers jumped in with me. I'm not going to say their names right now. You know what I mean? Because uh, I don't know if they want their names out there. But I'm going to say my good brother, my mentor, Harris L. <laughs> Big shout out to Harris L. He was with me in Lewisburg. But anyway, tore the joint up in Lewisburg, fighting for the crack law. Let the Europeans in Washington know he was, wasn't having it. He's from the crack oil era. It's not soft. You know what I mean? Not bragging, but just letting you know we came in angry, aggressive. We fighting the, 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 the tribulations, you know what I mean? Of the crack era. Now they put us in the system and they expect us to lay down and conform, you know what I mean? To their tribulations that they're putting us through. Well, Unique wasn't having it. Just keeping it 100. You know what I mean? So, you know, I tore that joint up. Wound up getting beat up, broke ribs, you know, all types of joint. They tore me up. You know what I mean? The homies had to stitch me up with needles in the back of the cell type issue. You know what I mean? Just keeping it 100, you know, you know, back of the dorm. It was a dorm that had room, whatever. But anyway, so now, after that, they sent me to uh, ADX. You know what I mean? I went to ADX for three and a half years to speed it up. You know what I mean? Now, I started my bit, I started my programming in ADX. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I started learning to read and write. But I was just doing it uh, 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 at the time. I was just, you know, coming into myself. You know what I mean? Was getting fascinated with learning how to put letters together. You know what I mean? To, to, to know that C-A-T means cat. You know what I mean? At 30 something years old, you know, <laughs> in my early 30s. And it's funny, I'm laughing now when I look back at it. But anyway, I done put my joint together, took a couple of psychology classes, um, knocked out from uh, 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 like 96 uh, uh, to uh, middle of 99, three and a half years. To be exact, sometimes say four or five years, but it's three and a half years from 90s, from January 96 to like May 20th, 1999, I was in ADX underground. You know what I mean? For three years. You know what I mean? No sunlight, no nothing. I know brothers that's there 30 years now. You know what I mean? Between there and Marion. You know what I mean? But anyway, so I go up in there, do my couple of my psychology joints, but I'm not all the way twisted right yet. I'm still, you know, I'm still Harlem swag unique, you know, fly in the want the attention. You know how we do. You know what I mean? So now, 
Um, I do the programming, so they let me out. When they send me the, uh, 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 back to the regular USPs, where we come out all day and lock in at 10 o'clock at night, they send me to Allenwood. When I get to Allenwood, uh, I go to the gym the next morning, and, uh, you know, I start hanging out at the gym, met a couple of the homies. You know, like I said, I wasn't ready to change. I'm still doing me, man. I'm unique. You know what I'm saying? But when we get there, I meet, you know, they pointed out the big homies before me because I'm, I'm a little and just starting my bid. So it was two good old timers there. You know, William Underwood, big shout out to William Underwood. I'm praying for you. I'm behind the scenes trying to make something happen for you. You know what I mean? Your son reached out to me while I was in doing me. So I'm making certain moves with the little connects that I met, uh, that I made doing my, you know, you know, fight to get home and being home. So God willing, everything is looking good from what I'm seeing on this end. Cause William Underwood is another arrogant motherfucker. Like, excuse the language, is another arrogant brother like you need. You told you think I'm arrogant. Wait till you see William Underwood. That's my heart. You know what I mean? I mean, we bucked heads over the law cause we both had the CCE. You understand what I'm saying? And we both in the law library, we trying to fight. I get into that another time when I do a William Underwood story. Let me do my Guy Fisher joint. So they now meet Guy Fisher. They introduce me to Guy Fisher. Guy comes in the joint, got his little afro on. You know what I mean? I still play ball and all that. You know what I mean? At this time, he still a little salt pepper here at this time. This is, uh, like I said, two, uh, uh, 1999. So uh, uh, he was born in 47. So y'all do it, man. So he's an old man now. But he, he, you know what I mean? He's still in good state. Every morning he go to the gym, work out. Him, got his little corner working out. Underwood in his corner. And me and my little wild crew in our corner, we smoking our weed and drinking our wine. And we wilding out. And we talking about how we going to get the next ball. Uh, a couple of balloons of dope up in the joint. I'm going to keep it 100. I did the time. Y'all know what I did. I sold a lot of dope in the jail, too. Off school, messing up. Because I wasn't ready to change. That's why I know that... I'm not forcing the youth to do nothing. I'm not even forcing them to listen to me because I ain't want to hear nothing. You know what I mean? Because this is where Guy and Underwood come in. So now I'm in the joint. So everybody around me, you know, you need that, that, you know, I'm making moves. I'm, you know, I'm got to, you know, we, we bringing shit in and we eating. You know what I mean? We making sure everybody eating and, you know, everything come through the visiting hall. So now one morning I'm over there, I'm doing my little workout. You know what I mean? Now Underwood over there, he's screwing his face up. You know what I'm saying? So now... I itch over there to see what's wrong. I'm thinking the big homie got an issue. I'm ready to roll with him because that's the big homie. You know what I mean? And the big homie talking about me and my crew. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, yo, man, the visiting hall is messed up like that. Could have, you know, Right now, they got to sit across from each other. They moved us further back when they used to have us sitting next to our family. And they changed everything up because we bringing dope in a mile a minute. I'm keeping it 100. We bringing dope in a mile a minute. Yeah, I sold a whole lot of dope, did a whole lot of investigation, got sent all over the country for selling dope in the USP. Everybody know that, so this ain't no secret. This is not bragging, just giving you the history on where this good brother guy come in at. You understand what I'm saying? So Underwood screwing his face up. Ah, nah, nah, nah. You know what I mean? But you know, I don't give, you know, he a man, I'm a man, you don't like it, I don't like it. So I say, yo, dog, I got to eat too, man. You know, I'm going to do me. No one stopped you when you did you. You know what I'm saying? So don't sit here and try and interfere with, with, with my generation. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? You you know, you too damn old. You know what I'm saying? In other words, the same thing that the young dude is saying to me now. Man, you need, you too old. Nobody trying to hear what you got to say. We going to do what we got to do out here. You been gone 26 years, damn near three decades. You don't know nothing was going on out here. You know what I mean? So this is how they looking at me. You know what I mean? So when, when you know, when Underwood telling me this, I'm looking at him. I say, yo, dog, man, you know, you're just too old. Man. I ain't trying to hit in. You see all these stamps I got in. You see how much money I'm sending home feeding my kids. I just bought my son, you know, weighing a couple of the new Sony Nintendo games. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, them joint like 70, 80, 140. We're like, you know, I mean, you know, I'm supporting the family from in the joint. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and the messed up part is I didn't really need to be doing it because I still had a little paper at the time. You know what I mean? So I didn't need to be doing it, but you know, it just in me to just be a screw up. You know what I mean? It was in me to be a young screw up. You know what I mean? I'm keeping it 100. You know what I mean? So now that was Underwood screwing and we had our little running with that. So now, you know, I see old guy over there. So I push up on him one day and you know, ah, I, I remember I'm just learning to read and write. So they telling me, oh, he runs a screenwriting play class and he does this and that, with that education. And right now I'm fascinated with education. You know what I mean? So I pulled up on him one day and I said, uh, yo, God, uh, you know, what's up? And he had an attitude. You know what I mean? He had an attitude. You know what I mean? But that's because he's really feeling the same way that uh, Underwood is feeling. You understand? And 
he looked at, he was in 2A, just so that he remembers, so you know I'm speaking facts, he's home now, he can contradict anything I'm saying, you know what I mean, he in 2A, you know what I mean, he probably don't remember the conversation, but I know he remember the whole incident, you know, the way the thing gonna play out, but anyway, so he in 2A, in the code program, my man Carlos Ortiz, big shout out to Carlos Los that caught his case in B-more, had the barbershop over there, nothing but family, son, that's all that was in there, nothing but gangsters, you know what I mean, Big D was in there, uh, I think that's the name, Big D, the one that went home and went, became Foxy Brown's bodyguard, because matter of fact, Guy Fisher got him that job from in there, to be Guy Fisher bodyguard, he was in the, like, Wojo, uh, video with, uh, with, with, with that kid, uh, 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 Black Rob, like Joe, like Woe, like, you know, when he say like Joe, he talking about Big Joe, that guy got the job to be Foxy Brown bodyguard, and God set that up for me in the joint, for Joe to go home and get in the way he need to be, you know what I mean, but anyway, so God screwing his face up, you know what I mean, so, you know, one day I went over there, I said something to him, I said, yo, what's up, big homie, and he said, man, you know, um, I ain't gonna tell you what to do or how to do your business, you know what I mean, he said, but man, uh, you know, you ain't supposed to do your time that way, man. You're supposed to use this to better yourself. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what these people are going to do. They might let you out one day. So you got to situate and set yourself up so that when you get out, you're good. You know what I mean? I said, yo, but Big Brown, I'm doing that. You know what I mean? I couldn't read it right. I done went to ADH, learned to read right. I done, you know, I started writing a book. And matter of fact, I was writing a rule in Harlem at that time. So I really went to God to get some advice because they said he was writing screenplays. You know what I mean? But I didn't get to get into that with him about, you know, the screenplays and all that. Because the big homie giving me a lecture as a little homie. You know what I mean? In Allenwood, guy. Remember that? In Allenwood, we was in 2A. I was over there in 1A. You know what I mean? But we all them in the joint. And he's telling me some good stuff. But I wasn't trying to hear that. I'm not going to front. I wasn't trying to hear it. Like, you young brothers ain't trying to hear it from me. So God telling me, man, you got to situate yourself. I'm like, yo, but I just left a big homie. Applebee told me the same thing. That's why I got into my psychology. I'm trying to do my thing. He said, yeah, but you know, look at all this you're doing over here in these people prison, man. You're making the living conditions more uncomfortable for, you know, you know, the brothers that's just trying to do time. Like, 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 you know, and he's saying like him in Underwood. So in other words, he tell me why they got their little issue. So I said, yo, dog, man, you know, this is all I know how to do, man. You know what I mean? You know, so I, I do what I do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I can't stop. This is just me. I want to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And he's like, yo, well, until then, you know what I mean? I, I really ain't got too much rap for you until you're ready to get your life together. But you really need to focus and get your, you know what I mean? Because something going to happen later on. I said, nah, I know something going to happen. That's why I got my GED. And that's why I took the programs. I, and, I, and I took the Unicorn ADX. And I'm telling the little things I did. He said, yeah, but you're still slinging dope. Bring it into prison. You're still doing you. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, but he ain't say dope. He said, you're still doing you. But I'm letting you know what he meant when he said that so we can get through the bull. Because he ain't know me to get in my business. But, but, I, but I respect the way he let me know this. And like I said, he probably don't even remember this. It was crazy. Is because it's the same way I run into a lot of the youngins that contact me that tell me stories how I impacted their life. You understand? And I never knew this because I was just being unique, just like God was just being God. But after that man told me that, man, I went back to my cell. And for the next 10 years, that stayed on my mind. And I gradually tried to follow his you know, what he was saying, because what he was saying, the end result was getting out of prison by programming. And I was loving it to, to, to learn anyway and programming. So I did that. You know what I mean? But it's always been on my mind. And I went from there to Lumpark. You know what I mean? And, and, and from there to Coleman, there to Lee County. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 Victorville. I mean, uh, Atwater, Victorville. I done been all over the place. And everywhere I went, I met a couple of young brothers that was talking about Guy Fisher. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know the brother, I was there with him, but I don't know him like that. I'm gonna keep it 100, he on the pound, I'm selling dope, moving me, and he not doing none of that. You know what I mean? He 100% in, in, in his writing scripts, Debbie Allen coming to see him, the brother doing him. I'm getting a bunch of you know local females come see me, and I'm doing me like I'm still in Club 2000, I'm still on the street, but that's because I didn't want to change. That's why I know if the youth don't want to change, they're not going to change. You understand what I'm saying? If they don't want to change, they're not going to change. You follow me? So I wasn't trying to hear that. But the little brothers, like I'm going to say one, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron, man, what's Aaron's last name? My man, uh, 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 man, from, 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 uh, from, uh, 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 Brooklyn, man. Aaron, I can't remember. Aaron, Aaron Tyson. You know what I mean? Um, got a, got a, 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 a cousin, Alicia Tyson. I'm trying to catch up with uh with, with Aaron and Alicia because they helped me down while I was out there in uh Atwater. 
But, you know, Aaron was telling me that he's into writing movie scripts and he learned from Guy Fisher. He said, Guy Fisher told him to write movie script. Yo, Guy, you remember Aaron Tyson? He was one of your students over there in uh, Allenwood. But he, he became my student in 2007. He was in Allenwood a couple of years before that. Came out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Got a, a cup, like a double homicide or something and a dope case. Got a steak beef. But good brother, man. Good young brother. But, you know, he was up on the guy and God told him how to write movie scripts. And I was already writing my novel. So he's teaching me what God taught him. What I could have learned from God my damn self. But I wanted to sell dope on a prison. Didn't have my life together. You know what I'm saying? But it's just funny how God came back around into this. Yeah, God came back around into this where Aaron is teaching me how to write movie scripts. Where I wound up writing a movie script to Aurora in Harlem from what God taught Aaron. Tyson, I'm naming names because, like I said, nothing, I'm doing, I, ain't, I don't need the lie to kick it. I am the views. You know what I mean? I'm Harlem. I'm that hinder. You know what I mean? God that hinder. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, Underwood that hinder. These are men that I'm naming. You know, that was still, this, we got Ahmed that's still that hinder. We got Boy George still in there. You know what I mean? We got good, we, we got we, we got Delroy Uzi. You know what I mean? No, come on, man. The yard, we got, dude, we got King King Blood. You know what I mean? We got, we, we got, we got generals that's still in there, man. We got generals still in there. You understand? But like I said, man, I'm just sitting there, man, and uh, Aaron taught me how to write the movie script about the beginning, the middle, and the end with the climax to come over the thing. Remember that guy? You told him all that. I ain't, I, I should have listened to you back then. You know, more. Because I listened to you enough to continue the program, and I slowed down my drug selling. But by the time I ran into Aaron, I had quit drug selling. This was 2007. 2007, I was done with the hustling in the prison. I was done with all that. Now I said, man, too much time done went by. Brother got to get out of jail, man. You know what I mean? Brother got to get out of jail. I mean, I got like 13 years in jail and that joint was kicking me because my, my kids getting older, my, 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 my baby daughter, love her to death. You know what I mean? Daddy, when you coming home? You know, what you tell a kid when they ask you when you coming home when you got a life sentence and you've been gone 13 years and they only 14? <laughs> what do you tell them? You know what I mean? But anyway, long story short, get back to God. So now, you know, everybody that I met that was into the literacy, um, writing in the jail, because everybody wanted to write their story and write books after they got in it. You know what I mean? All the ones that I met that was into movie script writing, God told them. Yeah, God, you told them. You know what I mean? And like I said, I know I was an arrogant young dude. I, hey, he couldn't stand me. You know what I mean? I know he couldn't stand me. He ain't got to say it. I know he couldn't stand me at the time because I was just like this. You know what I mean? When he's just like I am now, my other self, when I'm trying to give something to the youth. He was trying to give me something, but I wasn't ready to be, you know, receptive, receptive of it. I didn't want it. I still want to do me wrong while I do what I do, man. End the goddamn story. You know what I mean? That was 30, but it took 13 years before I said, man, yo, enough is enough, man. Forget these selling this dope in here. They don't we don't even really need the money. You know what I mean? Because, you know, my, 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 oh, man, I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, I say all this to say, man, God, you know, uh, uh, um, I listened to you. That's why I said listened. From back then, I listened to you. I just didn't implement it in my life. You understand what I'm saying? And everybody loved me, God. You know what I mean? Because I'm not flying in from home. I speak the truth, speak my mind, just like you. Just like Underwood, you know what I mean? I keep mentioning Guy and Underwood so y'all understand, we talking about the generation before me. I respect and love them. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's like the generation after us, they just want to glorify us and don't want to get to know us. But I'm sitting here speaking on the positive that Guy Fisher gave me, Unique Mega Audio. The positive that he gave me and didn't even know it. Didn't ask for nothing for it. Didn't expect to get nothing for it. And like I said, didn't even know I was listening. Just like I don't know who's listening to me out there when I'm talking. You know what I mean? And, you know, I run into a lot of people that be like, yo, Unique, I watch your YouTube, man. And, man, I'm listening. Man, that warms my heart. That warms my heart. I'm keeping it 100. If I, yo, man, listen, man. Like I said, I'm not the only, uh, uh, uh ex-kingpin. You know, I know God don't want to use these words because I already know God well enough because like I said, I dealt with him. I had certain conversations with him in Allenwood and I know how he moved. But, you know, yo, God, I'm still me, dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm still me with the arrogant personality and all that. So I'm going to keep it 100 and I'm going to tell my story how I tell my story. And forgive me for the words I'm going to use. You know what I mean? But 
you know, I'm still that good. Again, you know what I mean? And you know, you know, I'm I, 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 I'm that ex gangster guy, that ex gangster, underworld that ex gangster, because we all reformed from the bull. They was locked up before me. Maybe they never got into it like I did. I just got into it because I was just a screw up. You know what I mean? But I um uh, uh I, I appreciate you, guy. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for you, you know what I mean? You were part of why I'm sitting here. You know? Guy Fisher, you are part of why I'm sitting here. Because for the next 17 years, uh, 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 matter of fact, that was 99, 2009. For the next 21 years, you have been on my mind. With the conversation that I had with you. And for me, sitting back like a son and watched how you moved into prison. I'm moving with, with my, you know, with the knives, I'm selling dope, I'm drinking weed, I'm wilding, I'm with all the homies. You understand what I'm saying? I, you know, I, 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 I'm wilding. And that's what everybody knew me for. You know what I mean? From wilding. It's not to brag, I'm just telling you. That was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. By the mid 2000s, I said, man, enough is enough, man. You know, I should have listened to God from back then. You know what I mean? I should have listened to God. And he, I always said, I should have listened to God from back then. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but. The good, the, the, the good and the crazy, I'm going to keep it 100. Like I said, I'm working on some things to try and get Underwood out. I hope his son get in touch with me. I can't find him on the internet, but he con his son contacted me when I was in. But Underwood, you know what I mean, is unique on 10,000 on steroids. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's official Harlem. He had the uh, vigilantes back in the day on 16th Street. I mean, on 12th Street, you know what I mean? You know, with the army fatigues, you know what I mean? Maybe that's where I subconsciously started wearing the army fatigue because, you know, I started wearing army fatigues doing my little hustle when I felt in my military mode, like how you got uh, uh, Fidel Castro and Saddam Hussein when they come over here to America to the peace meetings. They come with their uniforms on, with their badges on, they show that they military suit to let them know that they not only the commander in chief, that they went in the fields. That's what I think that my bucket hat represents. That I came out the field. I'm a field. You know what I mean? Just keeping it 100. I'm a field. You know what I mean? You know? So I'm talking to field units right now. I can take my hat off and try and talk all proper. I can't do it because that's not me. But the brother guy, that's the doctor. Hey, man, I love you, man. You just don't know, man. I mean, tears ready to come to my eyes just to know that you finally made it out. And that's sincerely coming from my heart. I'm giving you a welcome home from a young brother that's an old man now that you touched. You touched me. You don't even know you touched me, my brother. You don't even know you touched me, man. God put so many people in our lives for so many different reasons. And when they put us there, you know what I mean? We have to sit back and you know, analyze why are we here? Why are they here? Because God don't make no mistakes. You know what I mean? Maybe, because I don't know what would have happened. Maybe, maybe if uh, 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 I wouldn't have went to Allenwood to run into Guy and Underwood, you know what I mean? To see how the older generation before me was doing time 10 years later. And maybe if I wouldn't have tore up Lewisburg, you know what I mean? Uh, and, 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 and stare at the police, all this whole wild stuff that I did and wound, not bragging again, and ran and wound up in ADS, got my head busted up, did five years locked in a cell by myself, no sunlight, no air, no nothing. You know what I mean? They controlled the air, man. You know what I mean? They controlled whether I breathe or die. You know what I mean? Sometimes they turn the, 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 the AC up so cold, you can't even sleep under fire blankets. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes they turn the heat up so high you feel like you in hell. You know what I mean? Physically, when already mentally, you know you did. Because you trapped in a cage dealing with your thoughts, with your issues, and your life you have carried. You know how they say, like, when I got shot, you know what I mean? And I jumped off that six-story building, and I'm in that dumb way that I was going down. You understand what I'm saying? From the sixth story, before bullets sent me about to hit the ground, it felt like God caught me in his hand and put me down on the ground and said, you'll be all right, my son. That's what it felt like. And that's what it felt like laying up in that goddamn cell, locked in 23 hours a day, five days a week, because the weekends you don't come out, that's 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? I'm laying down there, burning up in there, man. Felt like I was in hell. And my whole life flashed in front of me. Like, man, I got to do better. You know? And then I remembered God. And I rolled over. 
and I turned on the TV. You know what I mean? Because they say they had GED on the TV. I turned on TV 2, 3 in the morning. It wasn't, no, it wasn't on. You know what I mean? So I couldn't move forward with my first plan of self-rehabilitation when God first hit my mind. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I scribbled with my little new, you know, hand writing that the homies teaching me how to write in the yard and sent the cop out and told the man, I need to see the site and the education. So when they both came up, I said, look, man, people gonna go crazy in here if all they got to do is look at these TV programs. Cause you give us a TV in the cell and you put that, the, 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 the education on, you know what I mean? For two hours a day. So the other 22 hours we could watch Jerry Springer, <laughs> you know what I mean? And Ricky Lake, you know what I mean? And, you know, and all of these little crazy talk show, you know? And, uh, you know, so I talked them into putting the, 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 the GED on a separate channel 24 hours a day so I could sit there and study. You know what I mean? And uh, by January 12th, 1998, I got my GED. I got my GED. I got my, I was so proud. I sent the joint home. My mother was so happy to get that GED. My mother, my mother said, baby, this little piece of paper means more than that $200,000 house you brought me, mean more than that $100,000 BMW brought me. This means more than all the jewels you gave me just to know that my baby is finally going on the right path. That's what my mother told me when I sent home my GED, man. You know? Well, a copy, because I sent the original, you know what I mean, to my kids to let them know if my old dad could go in school and get my GED. Yo, young dad better go in school and get yours. And right now, today, my son is a respiratory specialist. My other daughter is a chain store marketer. My other daughter, you know what I mean, is into forensics. Uh, 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 what's that? Uh, computer forensic or something. You know, some stuff I can't even pronounce. You know what I mean? And my other daughter, you know, uh, down in Myrtle Beach, love her to death. You know what I mean? She down there doing good in the computer science and all that too. You know what I mean? I mean, yo, I got, I mean, I was blessed. I was blessed. You know what I mean? I was blessed because the path that God took me down led me to a place that I was able to give my kids something to prevent them from going down the path that I went down by my choices. You know what I mean? I screwed up. I sold drugs. I destroyed my community. You know what I mean? I poisoned the community. I did all of that. I take full responsibility and that's from my heart. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today to try and give back. But man, if it wasn't for God, man, if it wasn't for God, you know what I mean? But God took his time to talk to me and let me know his disappointment in how my generation was moving. Because we all came in from selling crack, young kids selling crack. That's all we ever did, all we ever knew. So we go in the prison system now. We got people from all over the country and everybody's in the sniffing dope. So that became the drug of choice in the prison. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about you get a gram of dope out there on the street for like three hundred eighty dollars, a hundred dollars, hundred twenty dollars for a gram of dope. You know what I mean? And then you come in there and that go for, you know, a thousand dollars in the joint. And we weigh it out with a little chapstick cap. And we just put up to the line where the little school, the school line start beginning. You stop right under there. So you get like a gram and a half out of a gram. So we make it like $1,500 off $100 in the prison. And that's selling it wholesale. Then if we break it down, we made a little three, four grand. Yeah, I sold dope in the prison. Yeah, I screwed up and I was wrong for doing it. You know what I mean? But like I said, it took me 13 years to realize that I was wrong. And not only did I poison my community, but now I'm poisoning the brothers around me that's trying to get back to the community. These are the revelations that I had. You understand what I'm saying? From thinking about Guy and Underwood, the old timers when I first came in that already had knowledge of doing prison time. You understand what I'm saying? So man, God, you know, I know you watching this man and I know a lot of people giving you uh, your welcome homes, but this right here is from a brother that you touched. You know what I mean? And a matter of fact, I'm doing a show tonight. I hope this get done tonight. Tuesday night, this is uh, the third election night. I'm doing a show for a young homie that caught me. And uh, he ain't got a lot of views. He's trying to get on. He's doing his thing. Good brother. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, man, I don't even remember the name of the show. I don't have it here. Studio City, I think it is. You know what I mean? Studio City TV. I'm going to try and get this out tonight. At 7 o'clock is where we're going to be at. But uh, I took the brother's show because, you know, He's, he's like us, man. You know what I mean? I don't care how many views, how big somebody is, man. He's from the trenches and I'm there for the people in the trenches. You know what I'm saying? 
So I'm letting you know, you know, God, you know, I'm over here, big bro. If you need me for anything, you know what I mean? I'm here. We need to sit down. You know what I mean? You the doctor. I'm not the doctor. I always need a doctor. My daughter told me that day, Dad, you need to see a psych. You know what I mean? Because I'm still getting, I'm still getting used to, you know, after 26 years in prison and then 29 years on the street, you know, not loving nothing, not being loved by nothing. You know what I mean? And, you know, just surviving and not having no emotion in my life. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not used to expressing emotion, you know? So I reached out to my daughter, I asked her to help me. You know what I mean? That's my biggest problem. You know, females are more emotional. So I get along with all my sons, but my daughters, they feel a little different because, they, you know, daddy wasn't there. You know what I mean? And daddy should have been there. And there's no excuse for daddy not being there. And daddy made the wrong choices and th th that's daddy's fault. You know what I mean? But daddy's trying to do right now. So I'm apologizing to my daughters. I'm apologizing to my sons. I'm apologizing to my community. You know what I mean? And everyone that I've affected with my bad choices that I've made in life. Because that's where I'm at today. That's why I'm trying to give back. You know what I mean? But God, you know, let me, you know, I'm getting a little long-winded. But let me close this out, big brother. Let you know you touched me. You touched me. You know what I mean? And I thank you. You know, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, big bro. You know what I mean? Uh, when you get situated, hit me up on the DM. You know, I can't put my number up here. You know what I mean? Over there at Unique Mecca Audio, you know, at uh, Instagram or on YouTube at Unique Mecca Audio, Unique Mecca Audio TV, whatever. Just hit me up. And uh, you know what I mean? Know that, man. I love you. <laughs> I respect you. God bless you. You know what I mean? And I hope you live forever like I live forever. You know what I mean? Because I know you don't want me saying it, but real gangsters don't die. You know what I mean? We just get reformed and become men. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, you're not only a man, you're a doctor now. And I'm proud of you, big brother. And I thank you again. All right, let me end this. Yo, you know what time this is unique, the Harlem legend, the icon, the kingpin. Make sure y'all check out my YouTube channel at Unique Maker Audio. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like my joints. Make sure you comment on the joints. And make sure you share this joint. All right. Make sure you hit the notification button so you notify when the videos come in. You don't want to miss it. And make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that Unique Mecca Audio got it going on. All right. Hey, make sure you get this joint. It's bananas. A roaring Harlem at a roaring Harlem.com. You ain't going to find another better book. Yo, get this joint while supplies last because I'm telling you, the best book you're going to read, five stars, is crack. A lot of girls are, are doing stuff on the internet. They're escorting, they're being um, sex trafficked because they're putting, they're meeting these guys. They're oh, yeah, I heard. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I heard. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know that was all the way proper, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, we're going we to bring it in. There she go. We're going to bring it in because I'm on her. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have it up. See? Yeah, I'm going to have it up.